what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you a quick way to recreate the Korean barbecue restaurant experience at home on a weeknight. We're gonna make some bulgogi, we'll make some quick banchan, and the whole thing is gonna take us about 30 minutes start to finish. This is weeknighting. To get started, I'll need some beef. Specifically, I've got a thick cut ribeye here. This one is just about 500 grams or roughly one pound. I'm using ribeye because it's tender, very beefy and easy to get, though it's expensive. A cheaper alternative would be sirloin flap or skirt steak. To prep it up, I'll remove any of the excessive fat from the outside, then I'll slice it real thin. I'd say I'm cutting this close to an eighth of an inch, maybe thinner. This beef is gonna get cooked hard and all the way till well done. And even fatty tender beef like ribeye can get dry and chewy if it's sliced too thick. Now, once I've got this whole steak sliced, I'm gonna cut those slices in half into thin strips. And for the slices that have a lot of hard internal fat in them, I'll just clean those up by zipping that out. A one pound steak should yield me about 12 to 13 ounces of finished meat. I'll add that into a medium bowl, then top it with 30 grams of soy sauce, 15 grams of brown sugar, 10 grams of mirin, three grams of black pepper. I use pre-ground pepper because it would take me about five minutes to get that much pepper out of my pepper mill. Next, I'll take three cloves of garlic and grate them on my microplane. Also, a garlic press would work fine. Then 10 grams of sesame oil and a long drizzle of honey, about 10 grams worth. Next, I'll grab a pear. This is an Asian style pear that I got at Whole Foods, but I'm pretty sure a Bosque or a Bartlett would also work. This pear is obviously gonna bring some fruity sweetness to the bulgogi party, but it's also gonna act as a mild meat tenderizer. There's a protease enzyme situation going on in pears that naturally helps tenderize meat, but it's pretty weak compared to other tenderizing fruits like pineapple or kiwi. So if you're using a tougher cut of beef like skirt or sirloin, I'd say skip the pear and go for one of those other fruits. Now, once I've grated about a half pears worth of of pulp or 25 grams into my bowl, I'll add in 75 grams of thinly sliced white onion, and then I'll jump in and toss everything to combine. From here, I'll move this beef over to the fridge and marinate and tenderize it for about 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna make a couple of quick, salty, crunchy things to serve on top of my beef. In a Korean restaurant, this would be known as banchan, or, you know, all those little cute side dishes that you get with your barbecue. Today, I'm gonna be showing you three options that you can make quickly at home. You want at least one of them, but all three would also be a great idea. Idea. The first one is basically zero labor. I'm talking about kimchi. In my house, we always keep a gigantic jug of store-bought kimchi in the fridge because Lauren eats a lot of it. What are you eating? Kimchi. She lived in Korea for a while, so she's actually the one who got me excited about Korean food in the first place. Now to prep this kimchi for the final dish, I'll just slice it into thin strips. This takes the chunky square pieces from the jug and makes them a lot easier to pile on top of a lettuce wrap with some beef. But if you wanted something a little bit fresher and homemade, I've got two more ideas. The first is oi muchim, or basically spicy, quick pickled Korean cucumbers. To make those, I'll need three to four medium thickness Persian style cucumbers, and I'll just slice those into medium thick coins. If all you have access to is English style cucumbers, those can work, but their skin is a little bit thick, they're seedier and they're waterier than Persian cucumbers. So I'd recommend peeling about half the skin off, cutting out the seeds, and then chopping them into quarters like this. Now, into my bowl goes about 400 grams of Persian cucumber, then 20 grams of salt. I'll just toss those to combine and cure these cukes to draw out excessive water for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, as you can see, these cukes have juiced out a lot of their water. So I'll just drain that off and then scoot them into a medium bowl. I'll top those with 30 grams of sliced scallions, 10 grams or about three cloves of grated fresh garlic, five grams of sesame seeds, then 10 grams of sugar, 10 grams of rice vinegar, seven to eight grams of sesame oil, and then 25 grams of Korean gochugaru. Hey Bri, what is that? Gochugaru is the omnipresent chili powder that you see used in almost all Korean cooking. It has a medium plus level of heat, I'd say, and I'd recommend picking up a bag when you're out buying your jug of kimchi at the International Food Mart. If you don't have gochugaru or you can't get it, I'd say sub a four to one blend of sweet paprika and chili flakes. Next, I'll just stir everything to combine here and let the cucumbers marinate with everything until I'm ready to serve my beef. Right away, these cucumbers are delicious, but after about a half hour of marination, they've softened a little bit more 
more, but they're still crunchy, and all that spicy, salty sweetness has unified. Okay, my final idea for a weeknight banchan is pickled daikon radish and carrot. For that, into a saucepan, I'll combine 225 grams of water, 75 grams of rice vinegar, 100 grams of white distilled vinegar, 40 grams of sugar, and 4 grams of salt. Next, I'll drop this pickle brine onto the stove and bring it up to a simmer. While that comes up, I'll grab a thick carrot and shred some down with my julienne peeler. In total, I'm looking for about 150 grams. Then I'll grab a thick daikon radish and grate about 150 grams of that as well. If you can't get daikon at your supermarket, I'd say sub in jicama or white turnip. Now, once my brine is up to a rip here, I'll drop in my daikon, then my carrots, then I'll give it a quick stir and then let it sit off heat for about 10 minutes or so. From there, I'll cool it down. And as soon as it's not hot anymore, it's good to serve as a crunchy tart garnish for the bulgogi. Now, the last little bit of prep that I'm gonna do before cooking the beef is to quickly clean up some green leaf lettuce. For that, I'll cut off the top, then the base of a head of lettuce here. Then I'll leaf out that head into relatively uniform pieces, leaving the core behind. Now a quick wash and then a spin in my salad spinner. For the 12 ounces of beef that we marinated, you'll serve two people. So you'll need six to seven leaves per person. For now, I'll cover these leaves with a damp paper towel and then quickly thank Seed for sponsoring this video. As I've gotten into my middle thirties here, I've really started to take my health a lot more seriously. And for me at a baseline, that means getting plenty of sleep, getting lots of exercise, eating nutrient dense foods, and of course, paying attention to my gut health. About two years ago, when I was doing research to try and find a high quality broad spectrum probiotic, I actually found Seed and bought it well before they started sponsoring this channel. And that was my probiotic of choice. Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic is a 24 strain broad spectrum pre and probiotic that supports your gut, your skin, and your heart health. The most important part here is that inside of this probiotic, all of the strains are clinically and scientifically studied. So you know that they're actually doing something. So for a limited time, Seed is going to give you guys 25% off your first order. Just go to seed.com slash Brian and use code Brian to get 25% off. Your first order includes this refillable glass jar plus a little travel vial. Then after that, they'll send you refills in a compostable pouch made of corn. Again, just go to seed.com slash Brian and use code Brian to get 25% off. Back to the beef. After 20 minutes of marination time, the soy sauce has cured up the meat and the pear has done a little bit of tenderizing. So to cook it, I'll drop a nonstick pan over medium high heat. I'm using a 12 inch pan so the wet beef can spread out and catch a proper sear, but a 10 incher would also work if you don't have a pan this large. Now, once this pan is really hot, I'll drop in my beef. Since the meat is both cold and wet, it's gonna steam in the pan before it starts to sear. That's totally fine. That's actually what happens in most Korean barbecue restaurants if you're sitting at a table with a flat top grill instead of a charcoal one. Once this meat is evenly spread out to ensure max pan contact, I'll let it sit undisturbed for at least two minutes. This is gonna allow the liquid that comes out of the beef to sizzle off and let the pan come back up to a high temp. And after about two minutes or so, I'll come back and give this meat a flip to get some new beef touching the hot pan. Now, you could serve this right now and you'd have a nice medium beef eating experience and it would be great, but I like to get a deeper color and even more sear on my bulgogi. So I'll keep cooking for another two minutes or so, stirring every 30 seconds. After about 30 seconds, you can see that this beef is nice and brown, the sugar in the sauce has caramelized, and the cooking liquid is fully evaporated. So to finish this, I'll add in the tops of two bunches of scallions, or about 25 grams worth, and then I'll give everything a light toss to wilt those in. And that's that. The heat goes off and now we've got some glazy, peppery, well-browned bulgogi. To finish, I'll just top it with a little sprink of sesame seeds and then serve it with lettuce, my crunchies, and some white rice. The way I like to build this into lettuce cups or sambops is to smear some samjang on the inside. Samjang is a mix between the Korean miso known as doenjang and the Korean spicy chili paste known as gochujang. But there's also some sugar, onion, garlic, and vinegar added to round it out into more of a sauce. The flavor is a touch Ooh. spicy and very umami. It's a perfect baseline for this beef. If you can't get samjang, I would say mix miso and sriracha in equal parts and just stir them together. It's not the same, but it's pretty close. Next, I'll drop a scoop of fluffy, swollen medium grain rice, then a few ounces of my bulgogi, then finally a couple of my spicy pickled cukes. And that is basically all the tastes that you want in one place. It's very fresh, it's crunchy in several different ways, and you've got some peppery, sweet, salty, steaky beef. If lettuce wraps aren't your thing though, then an idea that I do all the time is to take this bulgogi and pile it on some rice with the kimchi and some of the other crunchy pickles. Maybe throw on some sauteed veggies to make this bowl into that much more of a week 
Ignite Weapon. I really hope you guys try this one soon because the flavors are remarkably close to what you'd get in a Korean barbecue restaurant and it only takes about 30 minutes. Let's eat this dish!